Hey, what's up everybody? It's Gabriella Marte here from Helps2. You are listening to The Creatives Conversation and I am super excited today because I have with me a great friend, I'd say, and a great creative. Her name is Jess Barrett and we're gonna jump on in. So I honestly don't remember when I met you, Jess. But it had to be through the prayer room here in Kansas City, mm-hmm. the International House of Prayer. We were both singers, and so we have a lot of friends in common. And just naturally, I would see you here and there. And then I found out that you are, I feel like this is selling you short, but an incredible illustrator. Uh, like you paint, you. well that's not illustration, but you paint, <laughs> you illustrate, you do graphic design, all of that, and you sing. Mm-hmm. Like, and you do all of it really well. And oh, so, yeah. So Welcome. Thank Welcome you. to my little show. This is kind of fun. We're having fun yeah, with this. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. I want to pick your brain. First of all, let's just talk about this. The book that we have out right now called We Don't Need Another Marketing Book, Jess was the illustrator. So I felt like it was the only the only thing we really could do. First of all, I was like, if we don't have this woman on our show, I am just wrong. Like, <laughs> She illustrated how many graphics was it? It was like, I feel like. 30 40, sound 40, right? 30? Something. Uh, 30. You whipped them out pretty quickly, too. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Because we had used someone whom we love dearly, but it just was not what we wanted. And then I was like, okay, we just spent all that money. Right. <laughs> but, like, as a creative, I was like, we cannot put this out until it's right. And then I knew you illustrated, and I was like, I'm going to hit her up. Which I and, don't know how you found that out. But I think that's actually the first I met you was because of that project. Yeah, I don't know. And so I remember yeah. I invited you over to my house. We mm-hmm. did we eat together or we sat together and we talked at my kitchen table. Yeah, you cooked me like salmon and something. Did I really? Oh yeah. Dang, I'm a I good got, human. It's like someday. four star. Yeah, the treatment. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to get to know you and you're super cool and I think we have a lot in common. So yeah. what would you tell people that you do? Did I explain it okay or like would you add or take away from it? I I think you explained it pretty well. So basically I'm full time staff with IHOP. Um, singing and then I guess the way I usually characterize it is I like freelance on the side so but a creative all around like it it ends up like seeping into everything I do so um yeah I think right now that's primarily what I'm doing yeah it's great so when did you first find out or like understand that like you were an artist I I don't even have like a starting point it was I was really young I've always Mm. loved to draw and I mean this in all humility, but like I've always been good at it. Yeah. So I think that's why I knew. So I, I would always go to like the elementary schools and, you know, the like how to draw books. Yeah. Like, I would check them out and I would go right to the last page. I'm like, I don't need, I don't need the <laughs> don't need like tutorial. I would just go right to the end and I would draw them and. Yeah, I just and people would always like come like, wow, like you're really good. Yeah. Um, so it was just something that I, obviously, you always grow and you're still skill and pursue, but. It's just always like kind of seemed like second nature yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. So what was the journey for you? Like, I feel like everybody has like an artistic journey. Like, do you feel like you have one or is it just oh, like, yeah. okay, <laughs> can you tell me a little bit? Cause I'm like yeah. personally curious. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like I said, all like ever since elementary or whatever, I would kind of even would be like a, the teacher's pet with some of the art teachers. It was just like, nah, <laughs> yeah. I can relate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, and then when I got to my senior year in high school, I took this like computer graphics class and it was so much so to the point that he was like, you don't have to do any of our assignments. Literally like you can just do your own projects every semester. So he would be doing like, he's at, he'd have the project projector up and be like teaching a class, all these like basics for like Photoshop. And I'm just sitting there like doing full illustrations. So like that was always pretty cool. But, um, It definitely has come with challenges. And for a long time, I was actually a little bit ashamed Hmm. um, because there's a little bit of a stigma around being an artist. Really? Talk more about that. That's interesting. (sighs) Okay. As much as you want. Don't go anywhere you don't want to go Yeah, I just, I don't want to be offensive, but I think anybody who's in art knows. Yeah. Okay. It kind of seemed like if you chose the art path, it's Mm. because you don't have any other plans. Like you don't know what you're doing in your life that's and real. that's like the fun. Or like you're lost. Almost. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. oh, you're, oh, you do art. You just paint a little bit, whatever, you know? Yeah. 
I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's really sad. And yeah. unfortunately, I I think there is a little bit of truth. Like, yeah, candy. I mean, there's been some people that's true. With, yes. I think that's where people get that idea from. Yeah, it doesn't come out of nowhere. Yeah. But I was always just really adamant. Like, no, you, you just wait and see. Like, like, I know this is what I'm supposed to do. Like, I always, my heart has always been, I've been of the belief, like, if God gives you a talent, you use it for him. So mm. that's always been, like, what I've lived by. And I just, like, it's, like, one of those you just kind of keep pushing along, like, okay, the, like, Lord, you lead me to do this. Like, he had me go to college. I didn't even want to keep going to college. Like, really? I didn't want to continue school. Yeah. It's not my... And where'd you go to college? Um... It was a community college back home in New York. Listen, there's yeah. no shame in that. Yeah, I just, hey, if y'all are going to community college, <laughs> it is great. Yeah. yeah. It did the trick. Yeah. I, <laughs> I just, I'm like, I, people probably don't. It was Onondaga Community College. That's the only reason I'm okay. not saying it is because I'm like, people are probably like, what's that? If but, somebody knows, leave a comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody from Onondaga. But um, yeah, so I felt like I was supposed to continue on and I got a lot of... Uh, criticism from family just mm. growing up primarily my dad's always been the most supportive he is always like let's get you the supplies let's whatever like he saw what was there but at the same time as my parents even or as other family they're a little concerned for me like mm. like really this is your career path you know so like once I kind of set my heart like all right I'm gonna go to college for this they're just like oh like no 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 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like there's so many other options wow and then to make it even better, my sister, who's three years behind me, she went, she kind of took on the college path a little bit after. Mm. And at the time, she was going for biomedical engineering. Oh, that's completely so different. Yeah. We were always getting compared. Like, oh, look wow. at your sister. Like, look at mm. that. Like, it sounded so fancy. Mm. And she's in social work now, which is totally great. But it goes yeah. to show you, like, I don't know. My dad was always like, you can get a. Uh, degree in underwater basket weaving it doesn't matter just like do something and I'm just like okay okay cool. yeah um yeah it does go to show you that like no path is like there's not like an optimal path no and you might think that you are going to like this optimal place by like studying something but like life is just not guaranteed yes and I think that that's beautiful that like even you have a story you're like yeah my sister went out for this but like even she's doing something very different mm -hmm. yeah that's really cool yeah. So you had all these challenges and then. Yeah. And even within the, like the degree I chose, I initially was just going, I think it was for painting or something. Oh, you're the fine. Sirens. There's always <laughs> some kind of police chase back here while we're talking. Oh so man, all the action. No. <laughs> so yeah, I went for like, I think it was for painting or whatever. And then I won't get into the details, but there was a lot of like moral and like value conflicts for like, mm. and I got literally like. Um, how do you put it? Like the teacher was, would like separate me in another room and make a whole point out of it. Like it was like kind of a, like a means to embarrass. And part of my reasons would be like, Hey, I'm not condemning you guys. I just, I don't personally feel comfortable. And, um, in like certain situations. And, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It was, it was very interesting. Hmm. And so even then I've kind of felt like on my own, I'm like, I just need to push through this, like, and follow my own heart like what I felt like the Lord was telling me and uh it actually it caused me to switch majors hmm. because I would have had a whole have a whole semester like just anyways it was rough yeah. <laughs> so just kind of pushing through and navigating the entire time and like following what I felt like the Lord was saying um I think even just that taught me a lot about perseverance even then it's like having to just be like, I don't care what anyone says. I'm like, I'm looked down on. Like, this isn't an optimal career choice, all this stuff. But like, I know, like, I'm, the Lord told me to do this, you know? Yeah. And so I feel like I'm seeing the fruit of that definitely now, like at this time in my life. And I'm so glad that I stuck it out. But I, yeah, it definitely was. How not. long has it been, like, this journey? Like, basically from birth? Or what do you think? Just feels that way? Feels that way. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I don't have a like starting point yeah, yeah it's always been that yeah did you ever have a moment where you're like I'm gonna quit yeah um so actually when I first moved here uh everything just kind of took a turn my mom and dad like suddenly just split and it was mm. just like a whole it was all downhill from there and I really believe I entered um like we we referred to like the wilderness season mm. and that, I mean, that played, how do I put that? 
that was like every area of my life got hit. And during that time, I was like, Lord, I don't feel myself. It felt like Hmm. he's like, I'm going to bring you out to Kansas City. And then it's like, it felt like he peaced out, which Mm. I know like scripturally, that's not true. But I had um, no creative motivation. Um, I had like my laptop at the time just suddenly like crashed for good. Like there was just several, like a lot of opposition to keep trying to create. And then at that moment, it was, I was kind of in a survival mode and I Mm. was for a few years. And I actually had the thought at one point, like I may never do art again. Wow. And it made me really realize that even the ability to create comes from God. If you're wow. not tapped in, like, if you're not, um, we say, like, abiding with him, but he is creator. And that ability to even get motivation or be inspired comes from him in the first place. Yeah. And I never knew that. I just always took it as, like, well, like, I'm just good at it. Like, that just naturally came to me. Interesting. And it kind of felt like, not taken away, but I I lost that ability for a, a good couple years yeah so in that moment I was like maybe I won't be doing that anymore huh that's really interesting I feel like I can relate I remember there's like this season of my life so like my main art has been like music and um there was a season where I felt like I was stripped of everything like (laughs) kind of like you like your laptop's not working Uh, but I was broke like as a joke and I just had nothing (laughs) I remember (laughs) legitimately I didn't coin that obviously I'm sure we've all heard that but I would ask God um I'd have like ten dollars to my name and I was like should I buy the deodorant that I need or fuel my gas tank to go to the gym today Mm -hmm. and I would have to like navigate life like that and I felt so like torn up about it and I was like, screw it. I'm just not going <laughs> to do this anymore. But eventually that kind of lifts. And so like, do you feel like it's kind of lifted for you or like? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. What was like a moment where you were like, yeah, this is done? Or like, how did you know? It all kind of actually was like, it all happened a little simultaneously. Um, and I don't know if out of context this makes any sense, but when mm-hmm. Convergence happened, mm-hmm. um, that's Which when I was- like an event- the ministry that we're both a part of. Yes. Yeah. Um, there was, the, I don't I don't even know fully why that caused it, but there was just kind of a turn in my heart. I was able to fully get plugged back into the um, prayer room. I hadn't been able to kind of prior to that, so I was just floating around just working random jobs, um, mm. like cleaning houses and gutting computers and random, like really random, just to make it. But I think once that turned, I was like, okay, we've got a little momentum here, and then... Um, I think it was like a couple Christmases ago, I got invited to do an art show and that was like the first, like something clicked because prior to that, I would just post things online and then yeah. I never had to deal with people's reactions. It was like, mm. here's a picture and maybe somebody would comment. People knew I did art and that was about it. Yeah. But there's something very different about, uh, like, okay, now I'm going through all my work. What ones do I make as a print? It's totally a learning process. I don't know what ones are going to be a hit. I'm going off of like which ones have had the most interaction online. Huh. And then there's the investment part of it. You yeah, know, you're like, I real. hope I make this back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so spend my money. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I started branding myself. I had had my website and everything. Um, but I think actually that was the real moment. It was right around the time the art booth kicked in because, hmm. uh, And then that was the other, it was so vulnerable. Like you have all your prints out and then people like walk by and they stop and they just look and they're just like (laughs) for like five minutes. And I'm like, really say something. Yeah. And some of them would just kind of look at you like, it's nice. And like, Mm. keep going. I'm like, okay. But the conversations around that, like Mm. I was like really moved, like, wow, the Lord's actually really on this. And I don't know, it just kind of lit that fire again. And then. Yeah. All of a sudden, I think right within the same time as when you approached me. So it was like all these open doors all of a sudden. And I'm like, hmm. okay, Lord, you're doing like, we're going with this again. And I took it way more seriously. Yeah. So, okay. So you didn't throw in the towel. Like, yeah. why? Like, why not? throw the, Like, what stopped you? Like, for real? I, I don't know. And I feel like this is actually a reoccurring lesson in my life. And each time it's like, 
I'm looking at the track record. I'm looking at the past. And I was so, I had to keep remembering, like, I was so confident then. Mm. Like, I knew it was an emotional response. Hmm. And I just had to remember that. Like, this is temporary. But I don't know. I I just had, like, the supernatural confidence prior to that. And so even though I wasn't feeling that in the moment, I'm like, I just need to hang on to that and trust, like, It'll it's going to turn out. at some point. Yeah. 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 So what would, like, if somebody's listening right now mm-hmm. and they're kind of in that, like, wilderness, quote unquote, season, where, like, it just feels like everything is dry, things are not working, it's really tempting to be like, I'm a failure, this is dumb, I'm not made for this. We've all been there where you're like, I don't even know if I meant to, like, do this. What yeah. would you say? Keep doing it. And actually, I think I would say it's okay. It's okay to, like, have that time even if you're not doing it like Mm. don't quit altogether but likely there's some other things coming up in your life right now that maybe you need to be focusing on just in that moment yeah and that's fair that's a good way to see it I've never like looked at it like that I didn't at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we're so but, multifaceted as human beings. But like, yeah. sometimes we can be so like one track pony, like where you just like look at one thing and that is like your whole life to you in that moment. Yeah. But like, you're so much more than just like an artist. Like you are multidimensional. Yeah, because I find if you if you are in that wilderness season or everything's dry, there's actually like a a purifying kind of that's taking place Mm. because truly for an artist, like anything you create um, that does spill over into all areas of your life. And that comes through like what you're creating. Mm. So if you're having that dry moment, don't force it. It's like, I don't know. Same thing. I don't, maybe it's not quite the same, even like songwriting and stuff like that too, but nobody wants anything that's fake or forced anyway. It's like, yeah, there's likely some things that you're needing to process at that time. I do think, I kind of wish I had pushed myself a little bit more just to maybe paint or do something, but not for the purpose of like, oh, I need a complete work. Mm, It's more, I actually think there's like a, almost a therapy or I think something happens as you're creating, like allows you to process a little bit more. So I feel like I, kind of wish I had pushed myself to do that a little bit in the time but you know I'm saying that in hindsight but in the moment I mean I didn't have an ounce of I've been there <laughs> I was like I don't even want to pick up a brush I want to do this I don't not even I was like so burnt out and taking it a day at a time so yeah I think just allowing grace for yourself where you're at in that moment and then it's like really cool what is produced in your life coming out of that and you can right. then take that into the next like right. oh Like, there's highs and lows in creating seasons. Yeah. Absolutely. I call them flows. Yeah. Highs and lows. Flows. Yeah. (laughs) That doesn't really, like, put the words together in any sense. But, yeah, I call them flows. Like, I was just telling myself this morning, I'm like, I haven't really been in, like, a music creating flow. But I've been in a a whole different flow and, like, business stuff. And that's been a lot of fun. Yeah. But I feel like, okay, that flow is coming to an end. And I kind of feel, like, a little bit of passion and I want to go create some music. Yes. And I think it's okay to be like that. Not everyone is like that, but I think it's okay to to be different. And like, you don't always have to be on, yeah. always producing, which is like an American thing, like a Westerner ideal. Right. Where we're always like, I got to just produce something. I'm not doing anything. I got to do something. Mm. <laughs> right? Am I yes. wrong? No, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. I know I feel it. I know a lot of us feel that. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I want to talk... You just said that you branded everything and like got your website up, all of that. Mm-hmm. Like first question, why, why then? Like, cause you were kind of like good at what you did. People were looking at your stuff. You went to an art show, but you were like, I'm going to brand myself, get a website, all of that. Because mm-hmm. we have some nerds watching and they're into that. And I'm a nerd too. So I really want to know personally. And <laughs> <laughs> so like, why did you make the decision to like, okay, I got to like put some infrastructure in place to start. I guess, reaching people or yeah. what was your thought process? Um, I think because I've tried a couple websites in the past. Yeah. They weren't so serious. They had a few different names at the time. And it was more of a means to just, it was it served more as a gallery. Mm. Um, but then I think maybe two years ago, right within the same window of time, um, 
I really started to also understand myself to be like an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I felt like the Lord was challenging me. Like he would open doors. It's actually a source of income as well. And Mm. like, Hey, this is part of your profession. And so to me, how you brand yourself is kind of like the equivalent of the elevator pitch. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so, um, yeah, I think just putting myself out there in a more professional way, but also like it, it was because I was seeing myself that way at that time Mm. too. Oh, that's good. That's interesting. Yeah. Wait, talk about that. Okay. So like before this moment, how did you see yourself? And then this moment you saw yourself different. What, What was the difference? I think, I used to just treat it more as a hobby. It's like, mm. I'm good at it. If I'm inspired by it, like to do a picture, cool. Like the Lord gave it. And hopefully when I post it, it touches somebody. And I just kind of left it as that. Wow. And that was fine. But then, oh, and I'll say this quick too, because I think another moment that things turned for me, my grandpa had suddenly passed away and to... um as a gift to my grandma to kind of comfort her, I had done this illustration. And, um, when I gave it to her, she like stared at it for, you know, yeah, maybe like five minutes. And I'm like, Oh God, like, what does she think? (laughs) Hope she doesn't hate it. Yeah. And she's like, like, Jess, this is beautiful. And I'm like, you know, thank you. And she's Mm. like, you should really pursue this. And I'm like, what Mm. do you think I've been doing all these years? (laughs) (laughs) But I think for in that moment too, it clicked for her. Like, Mm. Oh, you're not just, you're Mm. not just off like trying to have fun. Like you're actually real for you. Yeah. Wow. And like, you're going somewhere with it. Like she was touched. And so it was like right in that same window of time. That's I'm like, (coughs) I started to take Mm -hmm. a little bit more seriously in marketing it. And then, um, was it your grandma? Like, you think it was your grandma? Like, in that moment, someone, like, really close to you, like, articulating or bringing the vision to you, or? Yeah, I, honestly, part of it's a little bit of a blur to me of, like, actual timeline, but I do, that moment does stand out in my mind as, like, a monumental one, because, mm. like I said, I had been very uh, criticized by family. Oh, and so that so, was, like, a healing moment. Yeah. Like, Almost. It was kind of like, oh my gosh, I've been putting all this work in like full circle. And like, now you see it, you see why I've been doing all this and putting up with everything. That's insane <laughs> all <your craziness>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And then getting to see her reaction. And so that was definitely, um, that impacted me, but, wow, that's um, beautiful. Yeah. I feel like there was what, what did you ask me right before that? Yeah, I think I was on so, a train of thought, no, that's but. great. I think you're like totally on track because I yeah. want to know like the journey from you going from this is how I saw myself, but now yeah. I'm branded. Yeah. Okay. So I had also taken on um, another job um, and that was for about two and a half years. And I, I think that was the main turning point because they were, they were speaking over me as a creative and feeling from the Lord, like um, kind of. Like, I've got multiple tools in the belt. Like, they were saying, like, a Michelangelo. Like, you can oh, take wow. on any form. Like, he was a master of all trades, basically. Mm. And I was helping them with, like, podcasts and all this stuff. But um, that's where they really started to speak to the entrepreneur side of me and helped me actually find the language of how to connect it. So oh, wow. Um, that was the main – that's when I really started to market and, like, brand and do the website and be like, okay, this is the name I'm going with. And yeah. So, so you got connected to like some cool people yes. that like helped you out. Yeah. Okay. That's like learning lesson yes. because I think we oftentimes listen up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we oftentimes, I think as creatives can kind of like shoot ourselves in the foot. Not everyone, but a lot of us can be like, I'm just going to do this alone mm-hmm. instead of like opening up and letting ourselves become a part of a community yeah. or letting people speak into our lives. I mean, first of all, they have to be the right people, the right people. But, um, and I think you can tell by, I mean, not to be completely weird, but just how you feel when you walk away from someone. Like if you feel uplifted and like they are good people, they're probably good people. And if you feel like you got to watch your back and they're like evil, (laughs) they're probably not the right people for you to hang out with. And Mm -hmm. so, and somewhat challenging you can feel pretty rough sometimes but I think you can like honestly sit with yourself and know 
that it's like a good thing, even yes. though it feels a little rough around the edges because I've been there. And so that's cool. So you put a website in order. Mm-hmm. What else did you do? Because I know there's probably a few of us on here wondering like, all right, this girl is a great artist, which you guys have to follow her. So you'll get her information at the end of this yeah. and then links at the bottom of this YouTube video if you're watching YouTube. But like, what were the elements that you put into place branding wise? Because I know so many of us want to reach people, but yet like, what, like, how do you start? Like, if you're a good artist, where do you start with that? Cause you've done it. I've seen you. Yeah. I'm trying <laughs> to think. Cause it's been a lot of trial and error. And I'm okay. like, sometimes I look back on some of the old approaches. I'm like, Oh man, but it was what it was, you know? Yeah. It's so real. first knowing like you've got your friends, you've got your family, you've got your close circle who are like, they love what you do, right? Yeah. And so I would post, like I created like a Facebook page at the time and, mm. you know. Um, but for the website, um, taking it to the next level, uh, I don't know. I just I, I just did what I was seeing other people do yeah. and like kind of would modify. So I created a logo to like... That's helpful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, this might change. This might not. I, and you probably could create your own logo because you're super can, gifted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a little fortunate with that. <laughs> if you can't, a great tip is Fiverr.com. F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. You can choose from like really talented artists for super cheap. So if you cannot, yeah. which I mean, I could, but I still, it takes me, you could probably do it in like 30 minutes. Me, it takes me like six hours. So that's, <laughs> yeah. That's real. Yeah. yeah. That's real. Um. Yeah, so I just created the logo. It was thinking of a name for me. I did kind of a play on words. Mm. Like just what'd you do? <laughs> so it's a Grin Ann Barrett. So oh, wow. Um, I knew this, but then like I just forgot, and that's great that I asked you because it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, like that's. I don't know if this is actually the best approach. I'm. I still wrestle over this. It's okay. But on the website, it's just Jessica Ann. Okay. Right. Like I'm just. That doesn't have to change, but whether it's Instagram or like Etsy or like kind of offshoot, like more fun. Yeah. I'll do Grin and Barrett because I don't know. I just, I haven't been able to get away from it. It's just a play on my, like I just stuck my middle and last name in there, but it's like, I love it. It's unique. You gotta Uh, have fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think so many of us are not having fun. Yes. And it it shows. (laughs) Yes. People are not attracted to us dreary looking folks. So yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. So yeah, I created um, my own website. I use uh, Wix. Okay. It's pretty foolproof. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just learned like, okay, how, you know, you buy your domain name, like you register it, you buy it, you connect it. And I don't know. I just kind it of rolled boom. with it from there with yeah. your business cards, the booth that presented different things like, okay, now I need a banner. Mm. Now I need like price sheets and knowing how to like, deliver to people like quick you know yeah. and so so coming up with like an elevator kind of speech yes yeah yeah wow that's cool. so it's <laughs> it's layer by layer I as far as like advice on how you just you just copy I guess what you see you people look around doing. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I can use that I could like, not do that that's not for me yeah yeah okay can you tell us your elevator speech like what is it like where does someone start I mean, I have mine, right? Like, so when I think of Helps 2, and this came with years, because I've been Helps 2 for like, this is like my eighth or ninth year. And so mine was like, we help creatives sustain, build, sustain their craft financially, build influence and grow. Boom. Mm. Because that's eventually what we decided we are going to do. That's going to be the main push. So like, what's yours? Do you, <laughs> did you forget? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, mine's like, not quite put to. I'll be honest. I'm not as great with the in-person elevator. It's more like it's all together on the... Well, tell us your (laughs) version because I feel like I am very like race horse it, horses, horse, (laughs) horse ish, like horse radish. But no, but I'm very like boom, boom, boom to the point. That's just my personality. Yeah. Very city. I didn't realize how city I was until I moved here to Kansas City, which is a city as well, but I'm from like the San Francisco area. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize how like business like I actually am and I run a business, so that doesn't help either. Yeah. But I feel like, yeah, it helps me, but not in moments like this when I'm trying to like teach others how to like, you know? Yeah. I guess my heart behind what I do or if I ask somebody like, would you 
like consider me versus like somebody else or you know yeah. is I believe and I don't know if this is like along the lines of the prophetic but I always think of like if you have the the word heart art is in there you know mm, that's awesome and for me it's being able I'm very good at someone can sit down and cast their vision and I see it like immediately mm. and like you know the I'll ask them like what are what feeling are you trying to convey what are you like if someone's viewing your stuff what are you wanting them like why and that's it? why we met you asked yeah. me all those questions I did it was your idea to meet huh wasn't it I think so I think so yeah, yeah. so I don't know what it is it's when someone's like vision casting with me I immediately see it and I'm like oh I know how to communicate that and get it and so yeah um wow and just the element of including the Lord in it. I'm not saying others don't, but I'm, I'm very intentional about that. And I mm. think a lot of my inspiration or ability to do that comes from him. So that's more, I guess, my approach. I don't know that that's an elevator pitch. <laughs> I think but, that's beautiful because um, I think a lot of people struggle with their elevator pitches, which, I mean, some of us use them and some of us will never need to use these things. But... I think we struggle because we don't know why we're unique. And that's Mm -hmm. what you said. And I think you understand, you grasp why you are unique as a human and an artist. And I think that's really special. Um, And I think that's like a good way to start crafting your elevator pitch, which should be like relatively short, like 30 seconds. Like when you meet someone and they say, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Like I would say, you know, I do music and I run a marketing agency and I love teaching people how to reach people. It is so fun to me. Yeah. And that's really it. And if they want to ask me more questions, like, cool. But, like, I think that is what separates me, like, in the marketing world from, like, the next person that does marketing. Like, I love growing with people and mm-hmm. showing you how to reach people and making it simple. Yeah. And if you never need me again, that's great. That's, like, my objective. And musically, I love to connect people to love, to God, and, like, just really get to know them. And I think, those are my elevator pitches, really. Like, You're I do this it. because, boom, like, and this is what really separates me. And I think that comes with, like, experience, too. Mm-hmm. Like, and just having done it for so long, you do meet other artists or, like, other people in your industry, and you see them and how they operate. And you're like, that's great, but that's just not me. Right. Like, and you're able to separate the two. And yes. then you're like, there you go. You have an elevator pitch. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to say that you're – super mature in your craft because one thing I knew musically that when I was getting mature per se, I still have so much to learn and grow, but I knew I was really becoming like great in my artistry when I could translate what I could like the vision into music. And Mm -hmm. that took me a very long time. I would hear things in my mind and I could not translate them Mm. and I would like come close, but then like fall short. And I was just like so frustrated as an artist for so long. So when you say I hear a vision or someone tells me something and I'm able to translate it, I'm like, that is so uncommon. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's not common. It's like really um, something that is, I I attribute it personally. And I don't know if this is like even a concept amongst like other people out in the world. But in my mind, I attribute like the, the ability to translate as an artist to like, really having done it for a long time and like grasping your like your framework as an artist and so I think that's really cool I just want to say that thank you yeah do you have tips for someone who's just beginning like what would you say I'm actually glad you asked this because I've been (laughs) like I've actually been having a few conversations around this lately um because again even at the art booths like different people that will come up or um my own family but Um, I want to say like, I think there's such a value in doing art, even if you're not an artist. So I like first want to put that like a professional artist. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people like, Oh, I'm I'm not good. or I don't do that. And what I'm wanting to say, what I've been noticing lately is, um, you know, like you can, the way you learn like reading, right. Or like listening to music. But, um, I find I hear from the Lord the best and I process life just while mm, same creating. Yeah. It could literally just be like a doodle. Yeah. But it's like, and I, I don't have like science to back this up. I've actually been like wanting to look into this. It's like, I can feel something different happening in my brain though. Like it almost just kind of like 
disconnects from mm. Cause I'm, I mean, I've got like 5,000 thoughts going at a time. Like I'm a lot of us do, yeah. especially creatives. Like yes. we're just booming with thoughts. Yeah. And so it just kind of helps shut that off. And it's like, I can feel the relax and then I'm able to just like process or like, I like zone out. I don't know if that's the, I don't know. Or focus in. Or focus in. Yeah. Yeah. Cause sometimes I'll like, if I'm listening to a podcast or a teaching and then if I'm drawing during that, I'm retaining everything so much better. Mm. I'm not distracted and I actually can feel the, like hear the Lord weighing in on things. I just, I think there's such a value in just sitting down the art of creating, whatever that looks like. Oh, I love that. Um, I think we're made to do that. Like God is a creator. Yeah. And I, I like so long for more people to just tap into that. And, um, I actually told my sister this not long ago and she picked up painting again and it was like actually really profound for her and every mm. like we'll always FaceTime she'll like show me this painting again like hmm. my and then like my dad he doesn't have a creative bone in his body he like just went out and bought some acrylics or something just to try <laughs> because I just Why was like not? telling him I'm like like you'll hear so much clear like so much more clearly like you should just try it like you don't ever have to show the work to anybody I, just I love think. that but um to someone just starting I would just say like who actually does consider some, so I just address people who are like, first, um, I'm not an artist. I don't have the gift. So I'm not even picking up the brush, the pencil, whatever. I'm saying just create and do it because do something. Yeah. Something else happens internally when you do that. Mm. Like, and just the reminder, like you never need to share it just for you. I think everybody should like create whatever that looks like to the person who actually has the passion for art kind of considers themselves an artist but is starting I it's it makes me think of the verse like don't despise the day of small beginnings or, oh you know, my gosh it's, yeah that's the truth truly it's over time and a lot of trial and error and I always like to me it's everything like don't just don't quit never just keep right. pushing it and eventually it's at some point it just clicks I feel like I agree with you there's almost the reward of like you're actually sewing a lot in that time and you're learning a lot about yourself. You're developing your craft and it's not going to be pretty up front. Like, yeah, it's just not. That's so true. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the man. days of small beginnings. I remember them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I would just say to anyone who's like just starting, just go for it and trust the process and trust that, you know, the Lord honors that process. Yeah. And yeah, if it gives you life, don't don't cut that out. And that's I am mm. I don't know. I I I've been sitting lately like, Lord, I'm so glad that I pushed through and didn't give in. Like yeah. it's finally making sense. And then you have a person who comes up and they're like sharing with you what they just got off of your piece. Wow. And like and I mean I've been amazed. I I'm at the point is I feel like I'm slightly turning topic for a please, second. Please. Okay. Please. I'm at the point where I don't even um, really share anymore with people. If they ask me, like, what does this piece mean? Mm. I'm like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm like, what are you getting from it? Because I've been so much, like, I've been shocked by some of the conversations I've had or, like, one person can look at it and be like, well, the way you painted this and the eye here and this touched me this and the Lord gave me a dream back. and Like, they're sharing their whole revelation and I'm like, yeah, that's what I was going for. <laughs> you know, not really, going, but yeah. <laughs> like some elements yeah. of it. Yeah, but that's awesome. It's just making me really trust, like, I don't even know how to put that. I I am come to trust the gift the Lord's given me more than myself. Mm. Like, I, like, I know it's going to impact just where it's at, and it's nothing in that I can even do. Mm. And so, um, yeah, I... Oh, I love that. Yeah. I'm we like, tried oh. to explain away something. Like, art is just not meant to explain. No. It's like, that's not the sole purpose of art. Like, it captures. It really does. Like, you can look at different moments in history that are captured in art. But a lot of art was never meant to be an explanation. And I think our world right now, like, everything needs an explanation. And art just is not meant to 
always serve that function. It can, Mm -hmm. but it's not the fullness of art. And I think that's beautiful. And that encourages me. And I've experienced that with my own music that I've made. I've made songs about like different struggles. And then I will have people hit me up authentically in an email or something saying, hey, I really got this from this one line in your song, which I didn't even think about. Mm -hmm. That one line was like the one line I did not really even like ponder very much. And they're like, it really touched me (laughs) and my whole life has changed. And I'm like, well, golly, like, I just had no clue. Yeah. Okay. Your art really does go beyond you. It's like a whole living being, like it a is. child or something. Yep. Yeah. It'll speak for itself. That's yeah. cool. Okay. Before we end, mm-hmm. what is, well, I have some fun questions if you don't mind me. Yeah. Mind me asking you then. Okay. <laughs> this hasn't been fun up till then. <laughs> yeah. No, this has been so boring. <laughs> I'm so glad, Jess. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. What is one useless talent that you have? Oh boy. Well, I don't know. Some people might know this. Uh, I'm a pretty good shot. Like, like shooting. Basketball? Oh, sorry. Like shooting. Like guns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> is that oh, cons- guys back here are like, oh. I'm okay. actually. Like, <laughs> I'm thinking basketball all the way, but my mind's in a whole different place. So. <laughs> we were just talking about basketball earlier. That's probably why. Okay. So. Oh, really? Is that is that what you mean? That's a talent, yeah. right? Yeah, I that think. is a talent. My mom's a good shot too, but she was mm. a cop, so oh wow, totally different. Yeah. Well, that so you go to the range. Yeah. Dang, you have to take me one day. I'll go with you. Okay. I've never shot a gun before in my life. Cool. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's know, awesome. In for a treat. Yeah. Okay. Question number two: yeah. If you were on an island, what are three things? And I've asked this to quite a few people. Three things you'd take with you. It's one of my favorites. Of course, the Bible. That was one of my three things, too. Yeah. I feel like if I'm stuck on an island, I, I need, need divine some intervention. <laughs> yeah. Um, music. Some way to have music. Mm. I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's good. I'm trying to think, like, if it's an electric device, that's going to be a bummer because you Just have limited assume battery. That you could take it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I, I would need music for sure. And I can't do like light, hard questions like that. I'm like, there's a meaning. No, to me everything. either. I'm all intense. I'm like, so. <laughs> oh man. But other people are just like, yeah. I would take a boombox. I'm gonna dance, and I'm like, that is so cool that you would probably survive, and I'd probably like not, and I'd be so serious, and you're not. So <laughs> you know what's funny is I'm gonna drive home, and I'm gonna be like, ah, oh, I should have said, said this. this. <laughs> we can tell us later, and we'll like right. throw it in somewhere. <laughs> okay. And then last question: If you can give one piece of advice. To everyone listening, mostly creatives, you know, small business owners, what would it be? Like from your own experience, a piece of advice that has helped you or just anything really. If I were to sum it up into one word, it's it's the perseverance. It's the mm-hmm. advice is to not quit. And I feel like that can sound like pretty cliche, but it's it's for real. Mm-hmm. I wa- it's way too easy. Actually is very easy just being, eh, I'll go do something else. Or like push through the mundane, push through criticism, push through hmm. any opposition. I'm very much a believer, like kind of the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Makes me, I'm always thinking of Misty Edwards lyric. If you don't quit, you win. Yeah. But for real. So good. That's my main advice. And that goes for like pretty much everything in my life. But same actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like if you can, if you can develop that perseverance, then like nobody's gonna knock you out. Yeah. Like yeah. Settle in yourself. Like recenter again. Know your identity. Like get that from the Lord, but just keep pushing through. Yeah, and that's what I tell myself. Sometimes, like when you're in the struggle, the best thing you could just say is like, "I just need to stand, and like time will pass, and I will yes. be in a different place." Yes. I like, like this literally can't this go winter. This way that was forever. me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, when it dropped a negative eight in Kansas City, I was like, I just need to keep trying my hardest and this too shall pass <laughs> like, and, too, yes. and it did and it's hot now so we're good yeah okay and then how can people reach you hmm well my instagram grin and barrett it's a pretty easy way um and we'll put it on the screen in the description too cool yeah i think that would be the the easiest one and then and your the, website is actually grin and barrett.com perfect okay <laughs> just google it and it'll yeah. probably come up yeah that's amazing. But, um, one final thing I was Please. thinking is just um, I've I've been thinking lately how I've been feeling really strongly in my heart that actually the Lord is calling forth a lot 
a lot more creatives, mm. whether those who already like know that they are or are just discovering. But I'm saying that because I think a lot of people I've been talking to have been feeling this way. But and I don't know. I'm curious if you've been feeling this, but yeah. I've noticed it seems like there's been this shift in the spirit. I feel like there is something like there yeah. truly is a move coming. And if you look at like the Renaissance or you look at there's always an explosion of art. And then you look at Hollywood and it's, there's such this opposite yeah. spirit, but like, I'm so jealous to see like, sorry, no, good, right. like Christian content, whether that's like why I want to see the excellence in the music. I want to see the excellence in film production in the, like, why would the world want what we have if they've got it better? Like, yeah. so really honing in on like those skills and giving it to the Lord. I think even then there's like, a rapid growth but um I've just been really feeling I'm like there's going to be an explosion of art and that takes different forms yeah but that's why I think I'm pushing so much like <laughs> even if you don't think you're good and just paint like getting it out there because you don't know until you try right yeah but I think we're gonna be really surprised with what's gonna be coming forth so if somebody is feeling stuck or some I don't know I'm just like just keep pushing through I I don't know. That's I think yeah, no, you do know. I think you're onto something because okay. I feel that too. I um being at the International House of Prayer, I went to their school and um there was a teacher there and she mentioned like the tabernacle of David mm -hmm. in the olden days. And so King David in the Bible had like this twenty four seven like just place of worship where they had musicians and she said there were three things that the musicians had to be in order to be a part of that they had to be prophetic meaning they had to be able to hear from god that was a big deal yes. and they had to be excellent like very well skilled you would not find someone in there that like didn't know how to play their instrument to the fullest and then they also had to know about current events they had to be very mm -hmm. like down to earth as to what is happening and culture and all of that and i think there's just a call right now for people to be that. And I think we have, myself included, different people that I know, I think we've come close, but we haven't fully embodied that. And I think it's time. And so I agree with you. I think there's like a move. Like seasons are shifting. Even if you're on here listening and you're not a Christian, like I feel like seasons yeah. are just shifting for all of us. Like yes. when things shift, it's not just for one type of people. It's everyone experiences it. But the reality is I do feel like there's like this call to like stop selling yourself short. Yes. And to like be excellent and like dare I say wholesome. Like I just feel like we have sold art short. Like if I'm just gonna be honest, yeah. art short in the sense of people, a lot of us creatives, we have cheaply created so that we could have people follow us. Mm -hmm. Not just like in terms of wholesome, I think you think, oh, just like nothing that's sexual, right? Like, but I'm talking like wholesome, like purity in the sense of like, what is your art supposed to be? Right. Not like, what do you create to get more followers? I think that's the shift coming. Like, who are you supposed to be? What is your art supposed to be? Mm. Especially Christians. But like, even if someone is in your listing, you're not a Christian, you yeah. too. Like, and if you don't know God, I think... Hey, the Bible does say, call out to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things and what you do not know. Mm -hmm. And that was a call to Jeremiah in the Bible in the past. But I think I know, not I think God is the same. So yeah. if you really feel like I don't really know like who I am and you walk away from this, I think you can call out. And without a doubt, I think you will figure it out by just yeah. crying out. So I had this I had this one moment that this kind of made me just even proud of being an artist. I was just remembering this, but um we know like Jesus, like he in every way made himself lower, right? Mm. Like humbled himself. Yeah. And his, even his craft, so to speak, like what is it? Carpenter or like he's, he's a creative. Yeah. Like absolutely. People look down on that. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's always been a, like an issue in society. It's always been kind of like a, mm, art, but like, boy, you appreciate it when you have it, yeah. you know? And I don't know. Again, it, it just comes back to like God is actually a creator. And so like that's my heart. It's like I want even just people to get to know him on, on that level. Yeah. Um, and he's a good one too. Oh, he's very good. He's not like <laughs> – <laughs> but I just feel like we've had some bad examples. Not all examples of like 
great art have been like that. But mm-hmm. I think there's been just some cheaply done things yeah. that we need to redeem in this new yes. season. Yes. It's yes. time. <laughs> it is time. Oh, so that's awesome. I'm yeah. glad you said that. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're such a gem. And I'm so glad that you actually illustrated our first book. Me too. Go check it out, you guys. Yes. Our first book. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Jess. Thank you. Thank you, guys. If you are watching, please subscribe. And we'll see you on our next Creatives Conversation.